Hey there! I believe you know already that you can use Microsoft Learn documentation during the exams, which is super cool. The thing is that if you haven't used this in the past, then you might be surprised during the exam by the way it works, because it might be quite surprising, the search results. And in this video, I want to highlight some key areas that you should be aware of. So let's get started. All right. So using Microsoft documentation. So first of all, documentation by Microsoft is really good. So you should at least know uh, what it contains and how to use it. And the very big and good move by Microsoft was to allow us to use this documentation during the exam. Which means that you no longer have to memorize all those tiny details, like a syntax of a specific query or some detailed differences between two services or something like this. Which is really good, because in real life you wouldn't be memorizing this stuff. No, that's what documentation is used for, to check all those tiny details. And right now you can use it, you have access to it during the exam, it's official. Now, let's take a look at how this documentation is structured and how to use it. And we'll do this based on Microsoft Fabric documentation, because that's the last exam I took and I know what issues I faced when using it. And please be advised that I had some issues with MS Learn Docs, which you can find some details in my last video. So. Uh, let's jump into Microsoft Learn documentation about Fabric. So that's it, that's the main site for it. And you will find the link in video description. Now, if you scroll it a little bit, you will see that a Fabric documentation is split into various areas. Which makes sense because Fabric is a big product. And you will see that you've got, for example, documentation about data factory. And please note that this is not Azure Data Factory. It is a different data factory that is a part of Fabric. You've got documentation about One Lake. You've got something about Fabric Data Engineering, about data science, and so on. And let's say that you want to go into Data Factory specific documentation. So let me open this site. And you will see that indeed that's a documentation, but only about this selected area of fabric, namely in this case about data factory. So in this part of documentation you will not find anything about security or about one leg. Well, there might be some links pointing to a different section of documentation, but basically these docs is about data factory. And the same is in case of all other items. For example, real-time engineering, well, it's about data engineering, right? The same if we go into Fabric Data Warehouses. It contains documentations about data warehouses exclusively. So, if you would like to draw this to show you how it looks, it would look something like this. So, let's imagine that I'm trying to draw all documentation about Fabric. So you know already that it is split into various sections or areas. So let's say that this black part is section about Data Factory. And it has multiple sub-pages that describe various elements of Data Factory. Apart from that, we've got documentation about, let's say, one lake. So, one lake. Again, multiple sub pages. We've got something about real time intelligence. We've got something about warehouses. Warehouses. And so on. And basically all of this stuff together, that's our complete fabric documentation, which is split into various smaller areas. And it makes sense. 
Now, you, as a person who would like to read about some details from documentation, you would usually use some search engine to find a specific page that contains all those information. For example, you are looking for something about data factory that is described in this page. So what you would usually do would be like this. So this is you, smiling as always. You would use some kind of a search engine in which you would type the search phrase. In my case, I usually use Google. So this is Google in a web browser. So I type some phrase and it makes the magic and it returns a link to this site inside the data factor documentation and everything works fine. I tested this, it's brilliant. The thing is that during the exam, you are not allowed to use Google. No, it's forbidden. The only thing you could use is this MS Learn site, which has its own search engine built in, but it behaves a bit differently. And what I mean by this? So let's say that this is our MS Learn search. And if you type exactly the same search phrase as you did in case of Google, it might redirect you to a different page than Google. For example, it will point you to this page, which might not be the one that you are looking for. And the thing is that if you practiced, if you learned for the exam using Google exclusively, then you might have hard time finding the same information using MS Learn embedded search engine. And let me show you this in action. So let's go back to fabric documentation. And basically, if you would like to search for something, you would have to use this uh, magnifying glass icon. And let's say we are looking for, I don't know, fabric, a very broad term. And it's the main page of MS Learn search engine. That's the stuff that you will have uh, access to on the exam. And the first thing is that, well, it will show you documentation about everything that is available in MS Learn docs, which might be a lot of stuff, a lot of buzz that you want to filter out. So the thing you might want to do is to filter the results by products. And let's say that you are taking the Microsoft Fabric exam, so you might want to filter it for Fabric only. And here's the first catch. Take a look. We've got two Fabric products available here. The first one, Azure Service Fabric, is not the one that you want to use. No, it's a different product. The one that is interesting for you is this one, Microsoft Fabric. So you might want to select this one to filter the documentation only to fabric related stuff. But now take a look at this. So this is my Google browser, my Google search engine that I primarily use. And let's say that I would like to learn something about copy statement in Fabric because I don't remember the syntax. I don't remember how to use it. So I would use Fabric copy statement. And the first link is to MS Learn site, which is cool because we want to learn from those official documentation. And that shows how to ingest data to warehouse using the copy statement. And let's say this is exactly what I was looking for. The first link is the valid one. And if I scroll down, I will see all those details, how to use it. And that's great because that's what I forgot, how to write this copy statement. If we write the same search phrase into MS Learn page, see what happens. And it was fabric copy statement. And the first link is about ingesting data into the warehouse. All right, so let's open this. But um, I don't see here 
the syntax for the copy statement. So no, 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 it's not the page that I was looking for. So let's let's see if in the search results from MS Learn we would find the page that I was hoping to find. We've got fabric deployment, not this one. Ingest into copy activity, no. Clone tables, no. How to create a copy job, no. And please note that as I'm going through the research results, I'm getting more and more stressed, right? Because first of all, if I'm looking something up in the documentation during the exam, it means that I don't know the answer, which makes me stressed already. And I'm getting even more stressed because I know that this documentation is there. Because when I was preparing for the exam, I found it. I know it is there, but here, using this wonderful search engine, I cannot find this, which makes me even more stressed. Now, if we go back to this um, link that was returned by Ms. Learn's page, you would eventually find the proper one, the proper page, by using, let's say, this link, right? That's the that's the same page that was returned by Google. But it requires you to spend more time to find this information that you were hoping to find in the first place. So that's the first example that it might behave differently, those two search engines. And please note, what happens if I uncheck Microsoft Fabric and if I search the same statement again? This time, the first link is exactly the one that I was hoping to find. So it means that you might experiment with selecting this checkbox and unselecting this just to see if it helps in your query. Let's take a look at another example. Let's say that you are looking for some information about Custa query language. Let's say summarize um, operator, how to use it. So what you would write would be Custo summarize. In Google, that's the one. Summarize operator that explains how to use this. Great. And that's what I was um, interested about. If we do the same in MS Learn page, so Custo summarize, take note that there is nothing that shows this exact statement of summarize. Why? Because Custo is not or Custo documentation is separate from my, uh, Fabric one. Because Custo query language is a, let's say, separate product that is used by multiple products, including Fabric. So if I would like to find this information about the summarized statement, I would have to uncheck Fabric filter, right? And then I would find this Custo documentation that I would uh, want to find. And please note that indeed it is a part of Custo documentation, not Fabric documentation. So the thing is that, well, apart from Fabric documentation, we've got some external docs. External from Fabric point of view. For example, Custo query language or SQL query language reference. These are the items that you might want to look for during the exam, but they are not a part of this core fabric documentation. So please be aware of this, especially if you want to use this, this filter. Another example would be to use fabric roles. So let me go back to Google. So fabric roles. So let's say I remember that there are those four main roles like admin, contributor, member and viewer, but I don't remember this, those differences between them. And I know that there is this wonderful table that highlights key differences between them. And that's what I'm looking for during the exam. And Google, it gave me the answer right away. In case of Fabric, let me type it one more time. It was Fabric, roles, roles, not role, roles just to be fair. 
authorization in SQL database? No. What is fabric administration? No. Understand fabric admin roles? Maybe. Let's see. No, this is not this page. So no, no, no. I'm not looking for this. I want to find this exact table. Permission model? Maybe. All right, so we've got a table with some comparison, but it is not the same table that Google returned. So it's not the same page. And please note that what Fabric did was to open a security documentation while Google returned a link to Microsoft Fabric Fundamentals documentation. So different sections of the documentation. So maybe it would be better if we uncheck Fabric and see what happens now. Security in Microsoft Fabric, would it, would it be this one? No, it's not this link. So again, please note that those two search engines, they return different results. So if you are used to using Google, you might have a hard time finding the same information using Microsoft Learn. So what I suggest you to do would be to use this MS Learn documentation, at least for the time when you are preparing for the exam. Get used to it. Understand how it works. Understand how um, the search works. What phrases you would like to enter to find the information that you are looking for. So that's one thing. Secondly, when you are preparing for the exam, make sure that you go through all those documentation, read it. Maybe not every page in a very detailed way, but at least try to understand how it is organized, what sections are there. So even if the search engine returns this page, you would know, all right, so I'm in a security documentation and I know that the information that I was looking for is actually in this sub page or in this section. So it will be easier for you to find this, this stuff. And one more thing, if you are using some practice tests to help prepare uh, to the exam, very often they work in a way that they give you a question and then once you answer it, they give you explanation why this answer is wrong or right. And additionally, they contain a link to Microsoft documentation that gives you more details about this specific topic. So what I would suggest you to do would be to try to find this answer for this question, but using MS Learn search engine and to see if you're able to do this and set a threshold. Let's say you've got 20 seconds to find this information because if it takes more, then you might run out of time during the exam. If you are not using practice tests, just um, prepare it on your own. Think about some areas from documentation that you would like to find. And again, set a timer and see how long it takes you to find this particular page and practice this. Because the worst thing you might do would be to realize during the exam that you are not able to find the proper page which you know it exists. All right, and that's it for today. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Take care.